Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the next rendition of the Cole and Austin podcast. My name is Cole. And this is Austin. And let's get a rocket and rolling. So how's your Vegas Golden Knights doing? Uh, currently, they are tied 0-0, but they lost the other night, and I was kind of pissed. Like, their current game they're playing as of right now as we're yes. speaking? Yes. I just meant, like, how's their, uh, what's their record right uh, now? Oh, they're like 4-1. and one. Okay, so yeah. they've, they've won two, lost one since we last spoke. Yep. Fair enough. How's the rest of the league doing? I know we touch on the like Golden Knights every week now, but what's is there anything crazy going on in hockey right now? Uh, there's a big trade. Pierre Luc Dubois from Columbus Blue Jackets went to Winnipeg, and Winnipeg traded Patrick Lane, their forward slash winger. So, all right. And if you don't know hockey terms, a winger would be like a midfielder in soccer, and like a, obviously a centerman would be a forward in soccer. All right. So. Alrighty, good little uh, little hockey update for us there. We got, uh, let's see, the Bills playing the Chiefs today. Yeah. We got the Packers playing... Uh, the Buccaneers. Buccaneers. Father time himself, Tom Brady. Dude, if he takes another team to a Super Bowl, I don't think I can hate him anymore because I'm like, damn, he is just too good. I... For a long time, I want, I did hate him, and I was one of those because I mean, like, we're Seahawks, I'm a Seahawks fan at least, and I feel like we robbed ourselves of that second Super Bowl. But let's not touch on that, you know. Marshawn Lynch on the one yard line, let's just not let him run it, we'll just throw the ball for a pick instead. You fucking goddamn it, doesn't make any sense, anyway. That being said, yes, so I too, for a long time, was like, you know what, fuck Tom Brady, I don't care for that guy, but. Since he's been at the Bucks, I feel like he's been able to let loose a little more, be more of like the Tom Brady he wants to be, just kind of like hang out, go have fun in the sun. Hey, let's get Gronk on our team. What the hell? He's a retirement. Shit, let's bring him back, have a good year. And look at that. They're in the goddamn championship game right now. Well, I mean, they did go out and get like Leonard Fournette for running back, and they True. got Antonio Brown for receiver. Like, I am a hater for Antonio Brown, but... But no matter if you're a hater or not, that dude is still a baller when it comes to being a receiver. Oh, yeah, he's skilled as shit. I mean, you can't – there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. You could be a scumbag of a person, but if you're good at something, you're good at something, you know? He's pretty damn good, so I could see it. But going back to Gronk, dude, do you see that video that came out where they were celebrating in the locker room last weekend? I did not. Okay, so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are celebrating after they won. They beat the Saints. And then he was – Dion White, the linebacker, mm-hmm. uh, he he was like, "Yeah, we're going, we're going to the next round, you know." And he was like celebrating with Gronk, and Gronk goes, "Yeah, we're going to the AFC Championship game," and everybody was like looking at him like, "Bro, we're in the NFC." And then he was like, oh, yeah, we're going to the NFC champ. I was like, dude, the guy's CTE just is popping out right there. I just think at, at some point, though, he played, what, he played his entire career in New England, though, right, up until this point? Yeah, but it was only like seven or eight seasons, I believe. Well, yeah, I get that. but And I'm sure, I don't know exactly, but of those seven or eight seasons, they probably went to the AFC Championship game six or seven times okay, so yeah, like in like, his head he's probably going oh the championship game again yeah sure AFC, whatever I don't know, it's football it's football man uh, but i that just proves how many shots he's taken to the head i feel like uh, true either that or it just proves that like he was totally in retirement he mode so and then dominant he, yeah. and then he came back and he's just like Duh, just here to catch some footballs uh make some touchdowns uh take us to the super bowl <laughs> i don't know where he got that accent from but you know <laughs> Yeah, Scarface, Al Pacino. So, yeah, we're going to the Super Bowl now. I, nah, it's uh, yeah. So I, I, I could understand his confusion there. Also, you're probably right on some of that. He's taken a few dingers to the, to the old insane in the membrane. You know what else has taken some dingers? What's that? My dating life. Oh, let's hear about it. How's the? Uh, <laughs> give me an update on that as well. How's the E Harms doing? How's your E Harmies? Yeah, it was it was not as high. As I thought it was. Not as good as you were thinking. It Didn't was, you? Did you have a date this morning? I did. Let's hear about it. Well, we went on a walk. Mind you, I've lived in this area for what, like 10 years? Yeah. 12 years, something like that. I've never heard of this trail that she said. And What's it, the name? Chapman. That's okay. I've lived here for 27 years almost, and I've never heard of that trail. Okay, so, yeah, it's like back part of, you know, where we're at. And, mm-hmm. and so I go there, and she's late. And first of all, she messaged me. She was like, oh, you're one of those people. You like to be on time. I guess I got to step my game up. 
Like, yeah. Oh, shit. You can't be you can't be rolling into a first date. Like, you should be on time. Right? Come That's on. what I'm saying. Like, I rushed this morning. I woke up late, so I was like, oh, shit, I got to go. Got to get things rolling. I got to go. So, I get there, get my coffee. First off, coffee sucks. Ugh, it's all burnt and butthole-like. Oh, that's never good. When you get bad coffee to start your day, it's just kind of like, well, looks like the first half of my day is ruined. Well, I waited in line for like 20 minutes because nobody, nobody knows what they want when they get up there. And so, yeah, it's just an awful coffee. So I'm sitting at the trail. She gets there late. We, like, talk. We walk the trail. And then we, like, walked for maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, came back to the trailhead, like, the start of it, and then we just left. I was like, all right, have a good one. She was like, have a good one. I was like, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. Did you get any hugs or kisses? Goodbye. I gave her a hug at the beginning, but, dude, she was not tall. Well, that does I do. thought, no, because she looked like she was going to be 5'7". Okay. But she was, like, 5'3". Does that change your opinion of her no does the whole four inches matter that no, much? we were just talking about hugs and i like i was going Fair into enough. the fact that my i gotta bend over when i hug these chicks because they're so small so it makes me feel like super weird I'm like oh come here you little child was she like awkward about it like ooh, who's this creep giving no, me a we hug like, no we gave each other a hug and then nice warm embrace yeah, it was, I guess. I don't know. It just like, and then we went for a walk, and I was like, yeah, I think it's me, dude. I just, I can't carry on a conversation with girls. I don't know how girls work. Dude, we're sitting here doing a podcast together. We did a I radio ca- show. I can carry on a conversation with you because you're a guy, and I know guy stuff. Fair. But, like, when I'm talking to a girl, I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. Ah, uh, Dude, you just swing for the fences, and... Oh, I swung. Some, sometimes you strike out, and sometimes you just smack yourself a good old grand salami. No, it's been a while since I've had that salami. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since you've had the salami? <laughs> no, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Okay, wrong terminology. But. All right, yeah, that, yeah, that's fair. Um, But my well. dating, yeah, my dating has not been going bright. It was a Bumble date, not an eHarmony. And the oh, e- okay. Yeah, so it was, I don't know, I feel like Bumble, in a way, makes women feel feel like what we have to feel like when we message first well isn't that the point of bumble is like ladies the girls got a message first yeah okay. i don't know i just like i think i'm just not gonna date it's just not a good idea for our gender because here he, e-harmony and all, all these dating sites they're not set up for like success for our generation we're 20 years old what are we gonna do we have no a lot of us don't have our own place a lot of us don't have a career a lot of us are, just, you know, still with parents or roommates or something like you, you know, how are you going to start a life with someone? And then everybody has all these expectations on the dating site where it's like, oh, I want to like find the stepdad for my fur baby. Bro, who, what guy wakes up and he's like, oh, uh-huh, I can't wait. To- I want to be a stepdad for a fur baby. Yeah. He <laughs> like goes on the dating site for that. Like nobody wants that. So I feel like eHarmony and all that, all these dating sites are just like, Set up for people who are 40 years old. They never met their love of the life, whatever bullshit fantasy that people set up for them to have after, you know, high school love or whatever. So they're 45 and they're like, I really want to find someone. Please don't let me die alone. (laughs) Like... They've already had that one that's gotten away in their life, and they're like, I'm just trying to throw that pole back out there and get another hook on the dude, line. Dude, whether it's the one that got away or they just never, like, worked out with anybody, or, like, in a case if they, like, had kids with someone and, you know, realized it never worked out. Just whatever it was, nothing worked out, and now they're like, oh, shit, I'm almost 50 years old. For, I'm 40-something years old. I should probably fucking at least die with somebody because I don't want to be that loner cat lady or dude that's just sitting at 85 like, yeah, I just had screw relationships when I was 22. So let me ask you then, which dating service have you been, uh, I guess the word I'm looking for is, for lack of a better term, most successful on? Maybe not so much like successful as in like ending up getting to do what you want to do just maybe like how many people have you actually talked to had a good time enjoyed the conversation and enjoyed their uh just hanging out with them like have you bumble i know there's bumble there's tinder there's e-harmony and that's about all i know that's I was gonna say there's just three that i know oh, okay but like i would just say bumble just for the fact that the girls 
have to message you first. Dude, maybe. I, you know, you gotta I'm, build, like, it's not fair for the dudes to always message first, and then it's like, yeah, what a douche, gonna ghost him, like, hey, how are you? Like, well, what do you want a guy to say? You know? Like, I gotta give him the good one-liners. I ask you how the day, how your day was, I ask you about your job, your your life, what do you like and stuff, and then they're just like, oh, this guy's boring. I want some, like, like you said, like, some good one-liners and stuff. Like, wow, because that really shows the intelligence of the dude. <laughs> Is that a mirror in your pocket? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, I don't know. But Bumble's been okay. I have decent conversations with him. You know, I'm I'm staunchly against using online dating services, but I think I might try Bumble out just for that sheer fact because I've been that the ladies have to message you first because I've been on Tinder and I've done the swipe right on 300 different profiles and not been messaged by a single one. So, you know, and you got like 200 and something matches and you're like, well, one of them's bound to message and they're just like, cool. I matched with you and goodbye. Wait, does it tell you when you get matches? You, you never got a match out of those. Fuck man. Jesus Christ. I've never even got a match. Damn. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's how sad that is. I didn't even know that it told you when you got a match. Well, how the fuck else would you know that you got a match? You just I don't know. Pop I've, up and they're like, "What's up?" I don't know. That's the thing. I've never. Oh man, I've never talked to a girl on Tinder. God. That's okay. We still love you. <laughs> Shit, I you hope got so. People That's love sad. You. That That's is... pathetic, man. Yo, man. That yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on that Bumble and see how that goes for me. I think you'll be successful. I don't know. It, Mm. Dude, I okay. This is gonna be a little twist of twist of topics here, but talking about dirty wieners, I got my wiener dirty the other day, and not with the way that you're thinking either. <laughs> so I'm at my buddy's house, and we're having a bonfire. And my buddy's got some bacon wrapped brats, and I'm like, "Fuck, dude, we about to roast these goddamn brats over this fire." And he's like, "Yeah, man, let's do it." So I'm like, "Cool." I get to roast in. We've all had like one or two. We're just hanging out. I'm like, shit, I'm going to have another one. So I, I slap another one on that stick. I, I grabbed a stick out of the woods. I did this like old school shit style. Grabbed the stick, pulled my pocket knife out, whittled that bitch down, made it a nice little point on the end. Took me like 10 minutes because the stick kept breaking and I was pissed about it. But anyways, got it whittled down to a nice little point. Fucking slap that second wiener on there and I'm roasting it. And I'm roasting it. I'm talking to one of my friends. I'm like... Ah, shit, let me, let me get it down on the fire a little more. Get this thing nice and hot. Get the bacon crispy around the outside. Oh, man, my mouth is watering right now just talking about it because I'm, like, thinking about watching that. Oh, the bacon was dripping because it was so greasy in the fire. And, like, oh, it was just, it was solid, man. So, anyways, I'm roasting this fucking wiener, and I look over at my friend, and I'm not paying attention, and my fucking stick catches on fire above where the hot dog is. And so I'm, like, talking, and then all of a sudden it's, like, I feel my stick kind of get heavy, heavy, and then, boink, it gets really light. And I'm like, what the shit? And I look back down. My fucking wiener fell in the fire. My Uh, goddamn stick burnt off, and my wiener fell in the fire. So we've got these metal prong kind of things. They're like, shit, grab these. Grab the metal prongs, stab this fucking hot dog, pull it out of the fire, covered in ashes. Just fucking covered in ashes. I'm like, fuck this, man. I worked on this goddamn wiener for like 10 minutes. I'm going to eat this son bitch. No. Don't eat, I'm not even done, dude. So I'm sitting there and I'm like trying to scrape the dirt off this thing, scrape the scrape the ashes off, and I'm scraping them. And as I do, I'm like, oh shit, I gotta pull this stick out of the end. Cause like the, the stick is still in the hot dog because I stabbed it in and it burnt off and it fell down. So I'm pulling the stick out, and as I do, the fucking I get it out, but the bacon flings off. It like flings out of the I, I kind of like release and it does like this whip sort of thing. And the bacon flies like 10 feet from me. I'm like, fuck this. I'm eating this dog. I'm eating this goddamn bacon. I don't give a shit. Go over there, find the bacon, wrap it back around the hot dog, drop the hot dog again off the fucking metal prongs into the mud. Say, fuck this. I'm eating it anyways. Pick it back up. Wipe that bitch off. Take all the little pine needles off. Stick it back on the prongs. Burn that shit in the fire. And I eat it. Dude, that was probably one of the best hot dogs I've ever had in my life. You're the most vile fucking human I've ever seen. The look on your face right now is just like utter it's horror. Just, bro, I'd have given up after it fucking dropped. Nah, There's dude. No, that, no, fuck you. Bacon, Ugh. dude, it was bacon wrapped like 
cheddar jalapeno brat. I don't give a fuck. Slap it in a nice toasted bun. I I put the bun on one of the sticks, stuck it in the fire, got it nice and crispy toasted around the edges. You so dropped that too, you sick son of a bitch? No, that one got nice and crunchy. Oh, so damn. I did that, had some shredded cheese in there, got a little bit of melty cheese in the bun. I'm weird, dude. I like, okay, ideal hot dog for coal. Nice and cooked over the fire, crispy around the edges, just kind of like pops in the middle. So it's like, it's all that grease is you know when they get that crease down the middle and it pops open that's when you know it's good do that nice toasted bun ideally i didn't have this at the time but ideally mayonnaise both sides of the bun dude i love weird shit with my hot dog put that dog in there a little bit of cheese on the top and you melt that it don't get much better it ooh, I, oh man with my mouth is watering again dirt yeah, a side of dirt, and, you and dip a it in. fucking sprinkle of ashes, you sick fucker. Dude, when's the last time you had a fucking wiener roasted dog? Uh, or a, a campfire years, roasted wiener? Probably years. Years. You don't know what you're missing out, man. After that first one, I was like, mm, this is so good, I don't give a shit what happens to this other dog. Yeah, well, I do care about what happens to my dogs. And I don't want them fucking falling in dirt, rolling around in ash, and then you're like, scrape, scrape. Like, dude, what do you fucking scrape it? Seven times? Oh, I after, scraped it way more than that. Okay, so how, first of all, how'd you even have a fucking dog left to put into that bun? They were thick. They were, they were some thick weenies. I did. <laughs> that was, was fucking disgusting, man. Just, nah, it was, it was some tasty shit. And my buddies were like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. I just wish I had this all in video. Yeah, that like irritates the shit out of me just thinking about Why? it. Why? Just how gross it is. I don't know. It's probably not as irritating as the new Xbox thing that came out, though. Oh, fucking tell me more, man! Where I they tried bumping up the the pass. I I was I was looking at that the other day, and I I woke up, I read the report. They're like, "All right, we're gonna double the price of Xbox Live Gold, and we're gonna set the price of uh, Game Pass Ultimate just a little bit higher than that." Obviously, is the incentive to get people to but just buy the Game Pass, and I was like, "Huh." Let's see, where's my computer? Go online, subscription, select, cancel. Not fucking paying for that. That's some bullshit, man. Well, then after that, what was it, 12 hours later, they, like, rescinded everything? Yeah, and <laughs> I got back online 12 hours later because one of my friends texted me, and she was like, hey, I'm playing Xbox. You want to play? And I'm like, yeah, I just canceled my subscription, and I'm on PC, so, I, like, my Xbox thing's not working right now. And she's like, oh, well why'd you cancel your subscription? I'm like, did you not read the shit? And she's like, what? And so I told her all about it. And then literally as I'm telling her about this, I go to read more information. So I type it into Google and Xbox. The first thing that comes up, Microsoft, we're so sorry. We fucked up. We shouldn't have done that. We're adjusting the prices back to what they were before. Like they, they realize that they really shot themselves in the foot and like everywhere on the internet, people were just, well, looks like it's time to play my PlayStation again. Well, looks like we're going to buy a PS5 now. How, how dumb is that, that some people have both consoles? I mean, I do understand that the whole Xbox and PlayStation, why you have them both. The only reason I could think is exclusives. There's certain games like Halo exclusive to Xbox. You can't play it on uh, PlayStation. Uh, God of War, exclusive to PlayStation, you can't play it on Xbox. So that would probably be the only reason, in my opinion, that you would get them both. Yeah. I guess it's no different than some of the people who have one console and then spend all that money on those like in-game purchases. I mean, yeah, that's true. What, I, is, what is the most amount of money you've spent? Don't. Yes. I don't I, even I, want to tell don't, you. You don't have to say like... A monetary value. Yeah, just like... Cause I know that you just ballpark it. Just for ballpark me. it for me. Um, let's see. So, the game this the game that I've probably spent the single most money is Overwatch. No, no, not Overwatch. Rock Band. What? And I, yeah. What the hell do you buy in Rock Band? You got to buy uh, songs to download. So the game comes, obviously Rock Band hasn't come out with the game since Rock Band 4, like 2015 or 16 or something. Um, you buy the disc, the disc comes with, I think the Rock Band 4 one came with 83 songs, question mark? Could be off by just a few there. But yeah, it comes with 80-something songs, 
And then once you like play all those songs and you're like, shit, I want to play some songs that I know and I enjoy. Just go on the store. They used to be a dollar a piece. Eh, Rock Band 4 came out next gen or newer consoles. They were $2 a piece. So let's just put it this way. You come with 83. I've got almost 600 songs. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. That's over that's over the course though of buying songs for Rock Band 2, Rock Band 3, Rock Band 4, having all the Rock Band 1 songs imported from the earlier games like back in 2009. You got to realize though, Austin, Rock Band is my shit. Rock Band is the one game that I can play anyone at just about anyone at and fucking wipe the floor with them. I would wreck you. You'd, oh my God. I it, would out drum solo the shit out of you. I sure hope that you're fucking with me right Dude, now. I'd be like fucking Darth Maul with those sticks. Jesus. <laughs> you might be Darth Maul, but I'm more like a General Grievous. I got four lightsabers and you got two. You're weak. Oh boy. We're going to have to have a drum off. No. Some of the money that I would spend in a game is like, a stupid skin. What the fuck? You say I'm gonna. You say you would beat me, and then I say, okay, let's have a drum off, and you just no, just nonchalantly. No, I, no, no. I'll have a drum off with you. That's already fucking. Oh, it's already good. planned. Oh, dude, that was right from the get go. This, I don't think you realize how good I am at that game. It doesn't matter. I don't have to. I was ranked in the world at I that don't game. Care. Oh, dude. I'm going to be like Forrest Gump walking in there, and everybody's going to have my little face with car- cardboard cutouts, and they're going to be waving it in the air like, yeah, Austin, woo. Oh, you are so sadly mistaken, my friend. You are so, so sadly mistaken. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this now, but please continue. You'd spend stupid money on a skin. Just like like I'll play Assassin's Creed. Oh, okay. <laughs> right now I got my little Viking dude, and he wears like a bear a grizzly bear skin. Okay, that's stuff pretty cool. Like that. Like it's cool in the game, but it literally does you nothing. Did you see where Fortnite now has Predator in it from Alien and Predator? What? No shit. Well, okay, they've been putting out a lot of characters though. There lately. there is no uh character or company that can that is free from Fortnite's total domination nope. they've got the fucking avengers they've got the goddamn i mean predator now Batman joker the, the batman the, joker the DC universe they've got so much just everything do they uh, please tell me they don't have star wars yeah they got star wars do they have star wars yeah, got, you're that, shitting me that was like a while ago oh dude i haven't played fortnite in like three yeah, years I haven't, yeah it's been a while that that's just, every time I see something new come out, I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus. They got John Wick. There yeah. is there is well, no they have one. they the updated John Wick. Well, yeah. The, it's, remember, it wasn't really, it was like a guy who looked similar to him, but it, it was wasn't the knockoff. Really, yeah, it was like the knockoff. It was the poor man's John Wick. <laughs> yep, yep. Basically. But no, that it's, it's, it's really astounding to me that this game came out, swept the fucking world when it did, and now... No, no, like I said, no character, no fictional character is free from being like totally dominated and being put into Fortnite. Well, some of the more popular players who play it, they get like their own emotes to it. That's true. Like uh, Ninja, he's in there. I'm pretty sure the doc's in there. Mm hmm. Yeah, they got, their own, they got their own characters like Pokemanes in there. She's got no shit. She, her, she doesn't have a character, but she's got an emote. No kidding. It's like a little dance or whatever. Like, yeah, I guess if you get popular enough with these games, you can like send in. What the fuck? Well, when do I? Pe- well, because pe- people buy it. Kids will be like, "Oh, Pokemane, that's her emote. I want that, mom. I want that." And then she's like, "Whatever, just slap it on the credit card." Dude, how how fucking infuriating was that? Like, is that just like in general? Because I think back to when I was twelve, I was ten, I was thirteen, whatever, and. I was playing video games. I didn't have no goddamn Xbox Live back then. I didn't have no play people online. It was like, hey, brother, you want to sit down and play Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64 with each other? Mm -hmm. Like, get the fuck out of here with that. You want to Star Wars Battlefront on the PlayStation 2 just one-on-one with our little 
computer armies like mm-hmm. no we didn't have that cool shit it wasn't like hey mom can you can you buy me this game and then on top of buying this game for me pay for in-game purchases as well like no nah, if i would have said that to my mom or asked her that i know fortnite's free but other games that do do that if i would have tried asking my mom that she'd have been like i'm gonna slap the shit out of you boy so how do you think you'd react as a parent now i i I'm too loving and caring, so I know I'd probably succumb to the whims. Exactly. Because I also know how it feels, though, being old enough to purchase my own. Like, I know how it is. Okay. So you should wait then until your kids are old enough to purchase their own. I mean, yes, but I also know how it feels to, like, hey, that's a really cool skin, or hey, that's a really cool looking character, or hey, this is a new fun song on Rock Band they just came out with. I want to experience it. I want to be the one, like, when I get on with my buddies, say, playing Call of Duty. When me and my buddies get on, they know I'm the guy with the pink shirt. I mean, obviously, I'm the one with my name above my character, but, like, I'm the guy that wears the pink shirt with, like, the pink and red camo on his pants, and it's like, yeah, I look cool. I look different. I know that my friend Dylan, he's the one that's got, like, in Call of Duty, kind of like you were explaining with uh, Assassin's Creed, he's got this big bear kind of like shroud thing over his head and so it's just kind of when you're playing it's easy to look and be like okay that's that guy or whatnot so i i would get it if say i had a kid a son or a daughter that came to me and was like hey dad i'm playing with my friends they've all got cool skins i'm just this basic bitch over here and i kind of want to look cool like ah okay little little jimmy or little Susie, i'll buy you a little Fortnite skin or man you're way nicer than i'd be dude i yeah, yeah i know i really hope that like i don't have to succumb to that what like, so you just hope you don't have kids it's not that i'm trying to avoid having kids it's just i have a lot of mental health issues and i think i don't want to bring kids into this world with everything that's going on in general that's fair with covid and you know just uh, the state that the world's in right now yeah just i mean it's just nuts you know i couldn't imagine bringing kids into it let alone bringing kids into a normal world with my mental health well that's fair i i feel like everybody has a little bit of something going on with mental health like no matter how from crazy people in insane asylums to people that just have like you know i'm kind of sad today but for what reason, you know, you know. It well, it's one in five. One in five people is experience mental health disorder every day. Really? Yes. So, I would honestly think it would be higher than that. Well, that that's just what the numbers say. You know, a lot of people don't want to admit that they have mental health. That's issues true too. Because here's the thing, and sorry for the ladies. This next segment is going to be for the dudes, but I think mental health for men is so like nobody realizes how important it is for men to have emotions. I think part of that is because there's such a stigma around like what going back to the, not everybody mentions that they have mental health. And I think part of it and part of the dude thing is personally, in my experience, I have found that it is a lot easier for women to talk about their emotions and their feelings and how they're feeling and being pissed off or what's bothering them. Whereas for dudes, I feel like the whole thing is if you talk about your emotions, you a weak bitch. Well, that's because our fathers and their fathers, exactly, like you said, have had a stigma where you're not supposed to cry Mm -hmm. and, you know, suck it up, buttercup. Dude, I'll tell you what, I am like, the biggest sucker when it comes to that kind of shit because i could just be like driving in my car on the way home hear a really touching song that hits me right in the feels and i'm like by the time i'm home like that was a good song man god damn good thing no one's in the car with me well just well yeah like i i get sad and i sing sometimes you know oh yeah everyone does you know and i think it's it's pretty sad in general that men have to go through most of their lives because I don't think men realize it until what maybe late thirties, early forties, maybe. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not that age. Yeah, but well, well, I know, but like, I as, think, from our yeah. father's perspective, what I see from our f- different dads, and I just see that they're way more mature and they're not afraid to have their emotional thoughts be open. But men our age, mid twenties, late twenties, you know, it's like, dude, like you can't cry. Why are you crying? Oh, yeah. it's. I feel as true as that is, I do think, though, that we are heading in the right direction because there is 
a lot more talk anywhere you go about mental health, whether it's I hear on the radio, they're going to do like, oh, mental health day for this radio station. Or I just see on the internet where it's like, hey, it's okay to not, it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to have to want to talk to someone about it, you know? Yeah, but... How, how many people like actually oh, look at I, those that, messages? I guess that's what I'm saying is like, I get it. We're still in that stigma of like, it's not, it's weird for guys to have emotions and be talk about it and whatnot. But I do think that as a whole, maybe in the U S I don't know about the rest of the world, but as a whole, we're, we're kind of heading in the right direction. Cause there's, I mean, there are definitely still some statistics out there. Okay. So there are 151 million Males, males in our in the U.S. Right? Sounds about 151 right. One hundred and fifty-one million uh, men. Okay, six million males are affected by depression every day. That's every a lot. Day. I mean, yeah. That. What is there about three hundred and fifty million people in the U.S.? Yeah, six million. That it might seem like a small percentage because what is that less than two percent or so? But still, yeah. mm-hmm. that's it's, a lot. Like that's. Point two yeah, percent, Jesus. But it, but it's just one. It's like one side. It's one gender. Okay, so it's not like it's kids and women and men. You know, like I, I guess my point is like, yes, it seems like a small number, and you know, compared to the one hundred fifty-one million male population. But I guarantee there's more than six million males. Oh, per, I agree. Per day and per year, and you know that's just six million that we're willing to say to say that they're affected, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's guys like me, maybe you, I probably don't know, me too, yes, that have depression and you know don't don't say a word about it. And it's not that we don't want to say a word about it; it's just the fact that if we say a word about it, we have to be cautious of who we say it to because you know our friends could make fun of us or. You know, some of our family members could make fun of us. You never know. You know, you know, I'm not saying any of our family members would for you and I, but I'm just saying in general that you don't know who's going to say, who's going to say what, who's going to think what, as soon as you come out with that. Cause that's a pretty big thing, you know? Oh yeah. Trust Especially, me. I agree. Cause you know, I like to act tough on the outside, but don't we all, you know, all, you know, most guys do now, yeah. I bet you 90% of dudes act tougher than they are on the on the outside than they are on the inside i know that's for sure because i like to act like i'm mr big baller rolling around in my cute little kia soul but then i'm like ah look at this douche well you just look like a little hamster Uh, yeah toaster car but you know i like to i like to think i'm a tough guy sometimes but then you know there are days where i'm like man I'm not that tough. I'm seeing dudes that are like 350 pounds ripped out of their mind. You know, I see dudes that are healthier, happier than me. And I'm just like, damn, like, man, sometimes I'm like, you know, my days are rolling over. I think one of the things that makes it really hard for men is that they don't necessarily because of the thing that we've repeated now multiple times, the whole stigma about men being, uh, not being able to be emotional. I don't think they, God, how do I put this into words? How do I, I don't think they think of what their options are. If they did want to talk to someone, I don't think they would go, Oh man, there's, I'll go talk to Jim or I'll go or Cole. I'll go talk to Austin or something like whatever. But because of the fact, because of, of us being males and their friends, we always act tough mm -hmm. as well. So I, I think, we, how about this? Here's, here's the plan for next episode, Austin, by next episode, let's have some sort of link or somewhere or website that we mentioned where someone can go to if they do have mental problems, whether it be man or woman, whatever it is, somewhere that they can call or go to or anything to just talk to someone anywhere that they can get a little bit of relief and not have to just compartmentalize everything that happens to them. Cause I well, know that's one of the big things that's my problem is I don't like to, for lack of a better term, I don't like to show weakness. So, which I know that sounds, oh, I'm so tough or anything, but I don't like to show weakness because I don't, 
I don't want to, uh, let's see. I like to car- compartmentalize things and then just like stash them in the back of my brain. And then one thing will happen and then I'll do it again. It stores up. And it just starts piling up yep. thing after thing after thing. And after I've got 10, 20 things sitting on my mind, it's hard to, hard to keep it all repressed. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, I need to fucking talk to someone about this for God's sakes. Right. And you know, like my pop, my pops, when he gets mad, he has a little vein that comes over comes his popping forehead. out of his forehead. And me yeah. with, like you said, when stuff starts piling up, I could just feel it in my head. I get that same vein. I'm like, oh man, I know like everything that's bothering me, but I just, I don't have a way of letting it out. And I think for me personally, I would never call the suicide hotline. That's just me personally. But you know, because I would call one of my family members first or my friends, but if you ever do need a number, suicide hotline, 800-273-8255. That is 800-273-TALK. 8255. Is that talk? Yeah, that I, I was going to say that number oh, like a minute what? ago. Yeah, I've had I've known that number for ever oh, since okay. we were in high school. Oh, okay. Well, I was good. part of the whole like suicide prevention, safety team, all that sort of shit. Nice. So well, like, Honestly, we need more people to get a part of that. And if it's not in high school or something just just join like a facebook group or something anything or, anything that'll get you to get something off your chest it it really does make you feel better i i can't i really literally cannot uh express this enough we went to school austin you and i we yes. went to college and high for school. communications yes like that was the sole purpose and i can't tell you how many people i've met that were communications majors or whatever have you or something that touches on communications where they'd have to take those classes and they were just angry because they didn't know how to uh convey what they were thinking they didn't know how to convey their emotions they just did what I still to this day have struggle with the compartmentalizing thing. And the thing that I know that I do is I can tell it's getting bad because I will have a headache every single day. There is no getting away from it. I can wake up, I can eat breakfast, drink some water, pop a couple ibuprofens, still going to have a headache. It just, that's when I know, okay, I probably should go somewhere, talk to, usually the person I go to is my mom, either my mom or my grandma, because they're the, you know, your mom and your grandma, they're the- Shout out moms and g-maws out there. Yeah, are you kidding? They're the best. It's like, I don't know, it's just nice going to them and being able to be like- okay, here's what's on my mind. Here's what I'm struggling with. What do you think? Give me your mom. You're 50 plus years old. Grandma, you're almost going to be 80 this year or something like that. Give me your 80 years worth of wisdom and knowledge and let me just, just teach me something. Teach me something so that I don't feel like this the next time this rolls around. And I almost think that's better for men to talk to women because as males, we have so much testosterone building up in us. I mean, it's, I'm telling you, dude, like I get mad very easily. And I feel like when I see a lot of my friends out in public or something, they're just like, first thing they're, they're mad. They're like, ah, oh, man, this person did this to me. Dude, fuck this guy. What, right? or what do you, I bumped into him at the bar. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Just like, it's always shit talking, you know, and bullshit. And, and I feel like when, I, like I, me personally, I don't open up, but if I were to talk to somebody, it'd probably be my mom because my mom is like the female version of me. So she's kind of, and she's older, obviously, and she's very, and she's wise. And so I feel like women bring down that testosterone. So I think as young males, it'd be easy, like, it'd be easy to talk to our dads. But what's the first problem, right? Your dad's going to tell you to suck it up. Right, right. So like us mentally, we're like, oh, we'll go talk to pops because pops knows best and pops is a male and I'm a male. But then we just revert back to like, he's like, oh, well. You know, I'm not saying most dads are like this, but I'm saying back in my you know, day. Yeah, just like, oh, well, just like suck it up and uh, figure it out on your own, you know? Stop being a puss, boy. It's, well, it's like, no, man. I was asking, like, what you did when you were young. But the problem was, is their dads were worse than our dads. That's in no that kidding. In that aspect where they were like, all right, you douche magoo, like, quit crying and, and, Get back to it, you know. Get back on that horse and ride into the sunset, damn it. Yeah, just like, you know, and there's probably like 17 other cuss words in there, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. So, but, and I, and I think as generations go on, I, th- I think young males need to, need to talk to their moms and grandmas more. Not so much as like, hey, what would you do in this situation? Just like, hey, like, 
How do you feel sometimes? What? Let me ask you. What is something when you feel your blood starting to boil? When you like feel that you're at that point where you're like, okay, the next, the next thing is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back, and I'm going to lose my shit on someone. When you get to that point, what do you do to try to like relieve yourself, calm the calm the pressure a little bit, like just get rid of some of that anxiety and that anger? If I'm at home personally, I would just play music. I would literally just throw my headphones on two, three hours of music. All right. You know, I'd lay down, probably go to bed early. If I'm at work or if I'm out in public, I I think of like maybe future things I have to look forward to. Like say this weekend, I'm going to hang out with the boys. Mm -hmm. So say it's a Tuesday, man, I'm, I'm really pissed. Like work's killing me. Like I hate this shit. I don't want to do it anymore. And then I just sit there and I think, okay, what's coming up this week that I can look forward to? You know, like my buddy texted me, said, let's go on a vacation soon today. So I was like, you know what? I think that's a good idea. I'd like to do that. So just, you know, looking forward to to future events. That's what I do personally. You know, what what do you do? Well, I was just thinking I one of the things that I like to do is I'll either and I know there's a lot of people that lean on this one is either go to the gym or do some type of physical exercise and perfect example just uh just yesterday my brother and i went on a nice hike it was about a 10 mile hike round trip oh my gosh (laughs) yeah oh my goodness i didn't realize it was so long but by the end of it i was like damn lane how long was that and he was like oh i was like at least five five and a half miles in and i was like what's right lane's a stud man the guy's in the gym all the time i see him he's always like oh yeah he's killing it he he's a stud he that was usually, nothing to him didn't even break a sweat how, how bad was your sweat oh i was dripping by the end of it and i don't even drip sweat i was i was struggling man it was it was a fucking cluster fucking half but we at least so the last time we went hiking before this there's two trails that are right next to each other one of them is a very steep like uh i think it's five miles round trip but it's all the way up to the top it's up this pretty gnarly little hill mountain sort of thing you get to the top there's this nice beautiful lookout there's a little uh, abandoned very old very abandoned uh, uh airstrip it's a airstrip for like uh, old school type of planes like the biplanes that would come in so there's one of those and then the other one the one that we did this last time that was like 10 miles round trip it's much flatter not a whole lot of elevation gain or loss and okay just, so that that was nice yeah it's just kind of nice easy little cruising along just walking here and there i took a lot of photos it felt really good but i tell you what the thing that was the best thing for me is just getting out getting the fresh air letting some of those shitty thoughts and whatnot just stay up in the mountains where they deserve to be good just, just good. leave my brain man so okay when you say that you leave that stuff. What? What? I mean, what do you do when you get up to the mountain? Are you just sitting on the mountain? Are you? Are you? Are you talking to your brother about it? What are you? What are you doing? So mostly, it's we don't usually talk that much about like super in depth emotional kind of shit, like get this off your mind sort of stuff. It's more so we we talk a lot about just football and random things that we enjoy here and there, and like ask him about. He'll ask me about the podcast, how it's going. I'll ask him about work, how that's going, that kind of stuff. And then um, the thing that the thing that gets me the most is I get to the top. Well, this last one, I get to five and a half, whatever miles in. Right. And before I turn around, I just think, all right, I feel like ass. My legs hurt, but by the end of this, I'm going to feel amazing and there and it just helps me it brings I guess it just brings me down to earth a little bit again it makes me realize like how wonderful nature is and all that kind of shit and how beautiful everything is and it just it makes me not want to be angry I guess it just for lack of a better term the fresh or the lack of a better explanation the fresh air the just the trees getting to be out getting to walk around sweat my ass off getting to see squirrels and birds and shit fly around. i got my head scared the shit out of me the other day the squirrel went running by and i thought it was a bird that swooped right in front of me and it landed right he stopped right behind a tree that was like a foot in front of me and i i just saw a flash and i was like lane what the fuck was that and he was like dude that was a squirrel calm down and i walked around the other side of the tree and i saw it running up i'm like jesus god i feel stupid dude. so i don't know it's just like that kind of stuff that 
gives me a chuckle, makes me feel better, makes me feel good for being outside. I get like today I can barely walk, but it's like that, that good feeling of barely being able, able to walk right after you just killed it at the gym. And then you're just like, your legs are all tight. And the next two days you're like, Oh, I can't move, That's, but it feels so good. That was a rough couple, seven steps up the, uh, up, up the, the stairs stairway. to get here. Yeah, yeah I know it was, was, it was a struggle, man. Yeah. I was like, oh, let's see, take one step. I don't think I've seen anybody one use step. that railing. In Shut like up! I don't want to hear it. Years. I don't want to hear and it. You were using it. It was. It was. It was actually pretty funny. I was like, uh, I looked like an old man trying to get up the stairs. And I'm like, where's the fucking ramp? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for the ramp, man. But you guys, you need to install like a. I don't know. Install a dumb waiter so I can just like climb inside of it. The little what's el- that little stairway that like. Uh, goes up the oh yeah like one of those uh yeah, it was, uh, where the, the handicapped folks they sit in their little yeah. wheelchair and they well, hook okay, up to I it, wouldn't and it say goes, yeah i wouldn't say they're handicapped well it's just stairs are a little tougher than it was 60 years ago for them fair <laughs> fair <laughs> yeah but you looking like you added the 60 years yeah it's i mm, i do not treat my body as well as I should treat my body. I do a lot of sitting in one place playing video games for like, you know, six or seven hours. And then my ass hurts and my back is sore. So say, so say you don't have the hike or the gym All right. or something physical you can do. Like you said, you stay home a lot right now. So what do you do at home that helps um, you mentally? So growing, uh, I'm, 26 going to be 27 this year i've been playing video games since i was at least four years old so that's what 22 years now video Father games. time's jealous <laughs> don't tell me i uh yeah so i usually i play video games i'll play something that's not competitive though because that does not help whatsoever i'll just play like a Single player, not online against anyone or with anyone, just Cole sit down by himself, kick back and just play a game and not think about anything. I like to immerse myself in a video game so that I don't have to think of the troubles of the world that are currently bothering me. But then I usually check my phone about 10 minutes later and I'm like, shit, I got to go to work or shit, this is bothering me or shit, I got a podcast to edit or shit, I got to do this. And then, you know, I it's not that I don't enjoy doing those things. I just... After a while, you even when you've got 10 little things on your plate to do, it's a struggle sometimes because even though they're little things, it's like I still got a list of 10 things to do, whether it's like wash the dishes, mow the lawn, just simple shit like that. It's like you just when when you're struggling with not being happy and being kind of depressed, even getting out of bed can be hard some days. And, Absolutely. And I, I feel that on a personal level. Absolutely. I mean, the only thing that's that's keeping me out of bed is, is working. That's the only thing or else, you know, if I, if I was working two, a couple days, a couple hours, you know, here and there because of the pandemic putting us through this right now, like I I would feel the depression coming a lot harder than it would be, you know, normally. Yeah. That's, and that's part of why I'm struggling so much right now. Cause I work a total of about seven hours across two days each week. Think of that. That's ridiculous. I sit at home for the other fucking five days of the week and then the other 21 hours of the day, the two days that I do work. Do you think that causes mood swings pretty easily? I could see that. Yeah, I could see. uh, Yeah, I because there's definitely been times where I'm like, yeah, cool. I I need to go to work. I need to get out of the house, whatever. And then I get ready for work and I just sit there and I sit down right before I leave. I'm like, I don't want to fucking do this. And it just kind of hits me like that. It's quick. It's yeah, it's quick. quick Cause I'll be like pumped. I'll be ready. Get out of the shower. I'm, I want to do something. And then I get to the door and I just, ah, I'm just not feeling it, but I know Jesus, I got to go to work. Well, I I think with mine, with my issue, I have bipolar too. So my mood swings are a lot more. They're a lot quicker. They're way more out of, you know, out of tune than it would be if it was if I didn't have bipolar but I think when it when it comes to that my I think the mood swings help in a way explain because from someone like myself that doesn't have bipolar or anything like that I couldn't imagine it being a positive for for me I guess the only way 
I could see a positive out of it is it's it it was a huge negative that turned into a positive. So my first couple of years of realizing I had bipolar, I just used it as an excuse. I let my mood swings take over and it I mean it was bad, you know. So it was way way out of character. And I think as I get older, I've figured out it's easier to handle them now. Is it kind of easier? I guess you can't really control it, but is it easier to kind of hone, kind of know when you're going to hit a mood swing sort of thing? So, like, if I know I'm going to get really mad, I just instant, I mean, it's like instant, dude. I'm like, nope, nope. Think, think about what's what's a positive. Think about that vacation my think, buddy think, told me about coming up. Right. Think about a vacation. Think about hanging out with the boys. Thinking about shooting pool or something like you know. Anything to get your mind off the negativity. An, anything. And I, I mean, there's there's 2.3 million just lone Americans affected by bipolar disorder. Just by bipolar alone. Just, just by bipolar disorder. Now, it's are hard we to say by bipolar? bipolar. <laughs> are we? Is that two point three million Americans? Or Americans, are we still on the no, same? Nope, no males. Just okay. Ma- women and male men are equal. Two point three Americans are affected by it. That's a lot. That is a lot. I could only imagine. So what we said earlier, six million men affected by depression. Two out point of a, out of one hundred and fifty one million. Yeah, I'm just I'm just adding up some numbers here. Yep. Plus two point three. That's eight point three. And then I'm sure on the women's side of the whole depression thing, there's at least as many six million or more. Yep, I don't know. Yep, I don't yep. know. So let's just say two. What is that? Fourteen point three million. Fourteen point three million people living with just some sort of uh negative disorder that affects their brain yeah that's a lot of people the average onset for the age 16 to 25 no shit 16 to 25 so you kind of hit that horn like a little little past the hormonal stage for high school Mm -hmm. you're kind of getting older you're like oh i'm starting to like feel stuff more you know go through my body changes and then 25 i i think early 20s mid 20s is the hardest for most people men uh, and men and men and women this is this is one thing that i've been telling people and i tell i know we are young i am not old by any means 26 is uh nothing compared to no. some folks that have no. lived to 100 years old or whatever no. but one thing that i do tell anyone that's younger than myself that's between the ages of shit i don't know 18 to 20 or so that I strongly feel that you change more as a person from the age of 18 to 21. You change more in those three years or 18 to 22 ish than you do from when you're born all the way up to 18. Those few years after you leave high school, you're no longer in that safe space, that safe setting of, because literally up until you graduate high school, all you're you with know, your parents all your time. Well, all, all time. you know every single day is wake up, go to a, a giant setting with a lot of kids that are also my age, sit through class all day, go home, maybe do school sports, do your homework, go to bed. You do that for 18 years, give or take. And then you get out of high school and yeah, there's a lot of kids that are ready for that. There's a lot of kids that prepare themselves. There's a lot of kids that go straight into college or go off to a university or kids that know that they don't want to go to college. So they either go to a technical school or right into the workforce, construction, whatever that may be. But then there's a large, even a, I feel like an even bigger chunk of students or kids that don't know what they're going to do. And they have no idea. They have no plan. They have nothing set in place for them that they're looking forward to. They just, they, they see as far as they can reach and they can reach as far as graduation because they know that they're going to graduate. But after that, there's a lot of kids that just kind of fall off the map and, or get into bad things or get into good things, find a, find something that they're really good at and that they never would have thought of and take off with that. But my thing is I realized for myself personally is between 18 and 21, a lot of big things happened in my life. Big shit. Big shit happened in my life, whether it's going to college or getting your first big boy job, big girl job. Getting a first big kid, like full time yep. job. Because I mean, wake up every school, day and got to pay bills. In high school, I was a dishwasher at a yeah. goddamn mm-hmm. cafe. Yep. Like, that's not the Worked new- at a hat store. Oh, so you know the feel. It's yeah, just a couple just, hours here and there, right? Yep, pretty much. So, so I feel like there's there's a lot of learning that is done between those 
those few years because you're you're no longer in your safe space you're no longer and I don't want to say that kids don't know what the fuck they're doing with their life but you're no longer kind of being guided along from your teachers being guided along by your parents being guided along by your friends because I can say there was I mean we went to a real small school there was only six seven hundred kids in our school when i graduated average graduation was like 170 yeah it was 170 ish and i just i know that there's so many kids out of those 170 that just had no plan and of those 170 that graduated with me i only maybe see have seen 30 over the last almost 10 years i've been out of high school now (laughs) and of those 30 only 15 maybe that I'm actually close with of those 15 Damn. maybe five that I see on a weekly basis I was, I was about to say before the five you got a big circle well yeah but those are like the people that the 20 or so are the ones that like I I could see myself hanging out with or like we'll go on a, oh yeah go, like a random adventure yeah or like I'll go to the yeah. bar or something like that kind of stuff but there's only really like five or six maybe friends from high school that I still go out of my way to keep in contact with text on a semi daily basis, see them all the time. And, and that's where I think kids realize that things change. Things change like a motherfucker. Cause you could be the most popular kid in school, uh, starting quarterback, captain, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. And, or starting cheerleader, whatever you want to call it. And then you leave, and what was that all for? Unless you're getting a scholarship for that stuff for, for and nothing. continuing that life of the star quarterback or the star cheerleader exactly. in college. And I feel like there's a lot of situations where there's a lot of kids where it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm the oh, big... Oh, fuck, f- it didn't plan out the way I thought I'm it would. I'm the big fish in the small pond. I'm Mr. Popular or Miss Popular or whatever. I'm the big hot shot and then they go and they graduate and they didn't have anything set up for themselves after high school and then they see the kids that they were making fun of oh you fucking nerd or whatever yeah that nerd just went off to college got his degree masters and whatever and he's now he's making six plus figures a year and what did you do ah shit you didn't go to college didn't have a plan kind of fell apart jumped from job to job didn't really know what's going on with your life so that's that's where i try to warn people where because shit changes shit changes and my mom works at the high school and so there's times where i'll just go in there and i'll visit with her and she'll have her she works in one of the offices so they'll have like a a student aide in there for their flex period or whatever and i'll just get to talking to them "Eh, what do you want to do with your life this and that and they're like, oh i don't know or they ask me about what i've done and i just i always try to put in there that you will change more as a person in those three years or four years after high school than you did the first 18 years. And not in a bad way. I don't try to scare them by saying that, but I try to just let them know that it's going to be okay. It's okay if you're a different person than you are right now. You just, you got to make big decisions. Exactly. Big decisions outline you as a person as your years go on. And I think one of the things that scares a lot of kids is throughout high school, a lot of the time you'll hear, well, what are you going to do in five years? Well, what do you plan on doing for a career? What are you going to do? Well, what do you mean you don't know what you're going to do in five years? And while, yes, I've been sitting here preaching like it's good to have a plan. It's good to be set up. You know what you're going to do. On the flip side of that, it's it's okay to not know what you're going to be doing five years out. It's okay. Just as long as you're on the ball, you're honest with yourself, you know that you want to do something with your life and you're doing, you're making a conscious and your best effort that you can to steer yourself in that direction. I think if we go off that aspect where you kind of got to leave the kids alone till they're maybe sophomore years, high school, you're kind of sitting there, you're like, okay, you're like hitting 16, you drive, you know, you're going to have to, you can get to a job and Mm -hmm. back, you know, I think then I mean, before then, we got to start teaching the kids how to live a life outside of school. Oh, I agree. I mean, dude, you know how many people I know didn't know how to write a check, didn't know checking, savings, all that, about bills and insurance. and That hurts me. I mean, just, and you know, like interest rate when you get a credit card, stuff like that. I mean, like, dude, this is all shit I'm learning now. I'm 24. I should not be learning this now. I should be learning this. Okay. Remember middle school? Mm -hmm. We used to do that field trip where we go and like all pretend to be big, big kids. 
with the jobs. Oh yes, I do remember. It was like that. the job fair thing or whatever. Okay, so we would sit, we would sit there and like like I was CEO of State Farm. Okay. Oh, you lucky dog. I was just one of those little shit receptionists that right. had to answer the phone. Well, I did. Sometimes you get the luck of the draw, but fair. So I'm sitting there, dude, I got to do interviews. I got to, I got to pay people. Okay. I got to figure out like uh, everything. Budgeting, for, like, how the budgeting, books work. Dude, checks. Scheduling. Like, uh, bro, I'm like 14 years old, 13 years old, you know? This, this is something they should have kept going because I loved learning about it, writing checks and everything, that stuff that was uh, would fucking help me for the rest of my life. But but what they do, they gave it to you for like a day and a half, and then they didn't teach you another thing after that. Yeah, exactly. They gave it to us as like a reward for doing our schoolwork for so many, you know, or our test scores or whatever the oh, hell yeah. it was. You know, they just rewarded us. By teaching us something that should have been fucking taught in school anyways. Yeah. Because I, now I'm yeah. sitting here at 24, and you, you said 26? Yeah. Okay. 24, 26, bro, we're learning about all of this stuff now. And mm-hmm. that's what causes us to have depression and, like, mental health issues. And, like, you know, it just adds, like you said, more on our plate. Dude, I could not agree more. You know, so I, I, th- I think if we're going to have the aspect of, of letting kids not th- oh i want to be a firefighter or a police officer like at the age of 12 like let them be free and everything i think if we are we still need to have a curriculum where we teach them to live a have a life outside of like you said their safe circle you know i i couldn't agree more and personally i was super super lucky my senior year of high school there was teacher that I'm not going to name was my teacher and he is a very very smart gentleman and he taught us some of those things he taught us uh, let's see how to vote that was the big one he taught us he taught us how to register to vote and actually for all of us that were in the class that were of age he because we were seniors some of us 17 some of us 18 he went around and he said okay how many of you guys are 18 and of legal age to vote half the class raised their hand he goes all right here i'm going to give you a real voters registration thing i will let you fill it out and if you want i'll go turn it in for you and he that was one of the things his big thing was even though some of us were 17 he still had us fill them out and he said well i'm not going to turn these in for you guys because that would be super illegal but uh, yeah, yeah no, that would not be good and so he was like yeah i just i want you guys to at least fill this out so you learn this and then he taught us how to write a check what goes in each blank he taught us a little bit about basically what a mortgage was not know so much like mortgage rates and shit like that he just kind of like a mortgage is a loan that you pull out on your house basically so that you can pay for a fucking house yeah. and so he he went over some of the light things like that with us and we would always ask him like hey what what the fuck's this i see my mom doing it or my dad doing this all the time this is an investment what is this and he would he would kind of guide us through it and i think that was one one thing that i was really really lucky to have is he was he was one of those teachers that didn't just go in to teach to get his paycheck connect with the kids, learn all our names. Yeah, whatever. And then go home. Like he wasn't that kind of teacher. He was the kind of teacher that I want to teach you guys this so that you learn it and go on and teach your kids this. And so that after I'm done teaching it, you guys go on and be better people in this world. You guys can go on and actually have some, a base of some sort of knowledge instead of just going to a bank or something being like, I need a mortgage and I'm going, okay, well you need to do this and that. And you going, I don't know what that is. So yeah. it was, I was lucky in, in getting able to learn some of those things, not everything obviously, but cause like, I still don't barely know what the fuck a 401 K is or like a, <laughs> a Roth IRA. I don't, <laughs> I know some small things, but not a whole lot. It, it, this is how bad it is. I went to work and they're like, Hey, you're like eligible for your 401 K. I don't want that. No. All I know is you do want that, right? They're, they're right. No, no. Yeah, you want that. Okay. You want that. Yeah. So and they were like, eh, I, th- I think you want that, Austin. And I'm like, no, I'm good. I don't see myself staying here for like another couple months. You know, I'm kind of just trying to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life. Find it at 24 because apparently everybody wants us to fucking figure everything out. What at, are you going to do in five years? Right. At the, at the age of, you know, young 20s, early or late teens. 
and uh, they're like, no, you're, you're going to need that. Yeah, dude, it's, it's pretty important. So I'm just now learning about what it's kind of like free money, isn't it? Yeah, you like you put in and they match it, or you put in and they put in. Yeah, and, with like a certain percentage. That you see, choose. like I said, I don't really fucking know what it is. I just kind of have a basic rough understanding. Yeah, so I, I it's just like you know shit like that. We should not be you know thinking about what a four hundred one k is. We should be like, yeah, I will take that four hundred one k paper because you know? I want that by the time I'm fucking sixty five and I don't have a shit ton saved up. Oh wait, I made a smart move when I'm early twenties. This is how I know that it's this world's not as good as it could be because the fact that we're, this is a subject for us to talk about is ridiculous. The with 401ks, all that kind of shit should just be common knowledge to us by this point. But we're sitting here going, what in the hell is that? It, it could just be also cause we are dumb asses. Well, and I didn't mean, pay it, attention when maybe we should have. Okay. I will agree with about 50% of that. I was, yeah, I, I give you 50. sometimes, sometimes we're dumb asses, but yes. I also want to say, it also kind of falls on no one fucking taught us this. True. Nobody ever taught us this. That was us in college. I felt like in college we had to teach ourselves a lot. Dude, I mm, don't even, I don't, mm, we'll talk about college a lot in these, in this podcast and future podcasts, but I can't think about that place without at least cringing a little bit, you know? Uh, it's, nah, dude, mm, you're telling me. <laughs> oh, trust me, <laughs> so, I know. You went through a lot, the hell of a lot more than I went through. That's all right. Got to come out stronger. I think that helped me a lot mentally. No, yeah. I, I know. Okay, yeah, that sounds cliche. You go come out stronger, but like you do, dude. You come out stronger. You don't like, because I'm not the same person I was, you know? Oh, that's so true. And I feel like. <laughs> I mean, I, true I, for I, me I as well. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I just think a lot of people our age, you know, with not knowing shit like 401ks and all that little petty shit. With building up depression, I think, you know, you, sh- you will come out better and you will come out with smarter decisions <laughs> after after you make some. All right. Well, there you have it. We got, what was it? We talked a little bit about hockey again this time, some video games, purchases in-game. Men's mental health. A little bit about mental health for men mostly, but just mental health in general, yep. some some high school shit, you know, just the good stuff, the things we don't know about. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the podcast. Uh, look forward to having you on here again, Austin. We are on YouTube. YouTube. Colin Austin Podcast. If you want, you can. So we're going to make a Facebook page called the Colin Austin Podcast, and we're going to post the link to our YouTube page. Are we just going to name this the Colin Austin Podcast? Yeah, we're going to have to. I think we're going to have, have to. to. Some of the names we came up with were a little, <laughs> little too. Dirty Mikes. No, no, no. It was it was Dirty Mikes and some boys. Yeah, but that's that's already been taken. Dirty Mike and the boys? No, Dirty Mike and the boys was the from the movie, the other guys. Okay. okay. I'm saying Dirty Mikes and some boys. Uh, I don't think we're allowed to use that. No, I, I think that, it's a little that's too close. Sa- that's what I'm saying. Some of our names were a little bit too much. Yeah. A little too much. I don't know. I think Dirty Mike's is funny as it is. Dirty Mike's? Dirty Mike's? But then again, neither of us are named Mike, so that doesn't really fit either. Yeah. That, yeah. So there you have it. The Cole and Austin podcast. We'll, we'll see you next week. Yep.